when the crank pulley snapped, we lost the power steering in Foxhole. I almost planted it there in the wall and it was like pulling it to the outside. <laughs> power steering is... what? Battery is off or something. Engine temp. Good morning comrades, welcome back to the channel, welcome back to the Nürburgring at the amazing Manta Racing Track Day. We have lots of great cars here today, we have the current record holder for the fastest production car, the 991 GT2 RS MR, the 991 Gen 2 GT3 MR, the GT4 MR and of course also one of my favorite cars, the GT3 RS MR. But the actual car that we'll be talking about today is actually... Michael, can you join me for this one? Is that a 996 GT3 MR? Yeah, that, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, MR at that time, at that time it was probably a, uh, not an MR but an OM. OM. You know, because this was finally the result and uh, the development of Olaf. Yeah. So the original Olaf Mantai yeah, exactly. car. So oh, what has done to it? We actually saw this car earlier the year, like January, February, when it was on the lift when you were building and we had a quick tour about the car and we could already see that it was getting lots of 9 and 7 watts I believe so let's do a quick walk around the first thing that meets the eye on the rear if you don't look at the body shape brand new exhaust yeah that's one of the options so the idea was or the owner of the car called us and said uh, I want to have a you know fun car for track but also for like mountain driving and stuff and what do you offer because lots of people, same like roughly with, are you doing any cars except Porsches? With yeah. Red Motorsport, this was the same like, do I have to own a 991 or a 992 in order I can give it some treatment at your place? Yeah. And so we say, of course we have, you know? And uh, then he said, well, what do you offer or what do you recommend? And then we were talking about the options. And here from the outside, it looks a little bit like a sleeper, mm -hmm. you know? But from inside, what we did is the same packages like on the actual cars. So we have um, brake upgrade, we have uh, aerodynamic a little bit, but here the old school uh, tunes in terms of engine and gearbox. Mm -hmm. So as you saw already... Which the, is actually unconventional for recent cars because there you leave everything stuck to keep the warranty as well. Yeah. But because also new cars offer more than enough power, but in this case it did receive a couple of upgrades. Yeah. So, as you mentioned, the exhaust already, the exhaust is part of the K410 kit, uh -huh. which Olaf uh, developed at the, that time. And we're talking already like, what, 20 plus years ago? I mean, the car was released in, I mean, this is a Gen 2, it was like 2000, 2001. Yeah. You know, there is that famous video back in the days where Tim Schrick was driving this car sideways mm -hmm. uh, with the Mantai package here at the ring. Yeah. Um, and yeah, the exhaust is uh, part of the K410 kit, which mm -hmm. includes also a remap and an air filter. Mm -hmm. um, power output is quite good. I mean, the car has 380 stock, mm -hmm. and with that kit, we are at 410, mm -hmm. like the name said. Um, apart from the engine, we also did the gearbox. Mm -hmm. the gearbox has a short ring pinion, okay. uh, and also a shim package for the differential, mm -hmm. and a single mass flywheel, including clutch. So quite quite a package so the, the the engine when you drive it now you know it revs easier there is a power output there this is especially what we did in terms of uh, engine and gearbox yeah nice so let's walk uh, around the car a bit more because yeah. i'm pretty sure what we don't see on the outside but we have here obviously the suspension what have you done for that uh, on the suspension, we are running a three-way Club Sport uh, KW, or now V3 Club Sport. Yeah. No, sorry, V4 Club V4, Sport. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we did some new brake pads, uh, also tires and stuff. But you know, 
when you are looking at such a car, which is 20 years old, mm -hmm. of course, there are some additional things you want to do. So for example, the car got a refurbishment of the calipers, the car got some dry ice blasting, mm -hmm. uh, some new waxing and all that stuff. So you Similar know- Similar to what we did to the 993 last yeah, year. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So because it's not only then, there was a bumper installed, which was not really kind of original. Yeah. So we put a new bumper on, we, there are some, some small specs to, to put an angle on the wing we did. Then on the front, for example, we uh, did some mesh into the air intakes on the front uh -huh. uh, because this is always something, you oh, know, you want to, to uh, protect the radiators from. So also some small bits and pieces which are quite important on such a car, you know. Yeah. And the brakes, as mentioned, is from 997, I believe? No, or the, this is actually original, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. nice. Well, and interior? We have. Interior, we, uh, we just checked because, um, yeah, of course, we did some, some cleaning in general. We also have a short shifter installed, but mm -hmm. not uh, the big CAE, one. Yeah. yeah. But uh, like a heritage one, which yeah. Olaf already sold like 20 years ago. And uh, then we put some actual harnesses in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Nice. Well, I guess that's all we need to know about the, the specs of the car. Yeah. So, and also for you guys, if you have a classic Porsche, don't be afraid. It's not an old car. Manta Racing also does old Kia. You are doing actually the Porsche Classic pretty yeah, much. Yeah, so. as you saw with your 993 and stuff. And honestly, you know, you see our mechanics in the workshop. They really enjoy to, to get not another 991 or a 992, yeah, yeah. but you know, here it's a little bit of taking care about the whole car and it's kind of a, a, a older lady yeah. but it's still I mean I drove it already and it really feels you know a small car and really reliable and giving good feedback so I think the customer will have a lot of fun with it I think so too and speaking of which we're gonna go out with the owner of the car for a lap to talk more about his ideas why he built it and then to find out about our experiences so uh, yeah, let's hop in and see what this baby can do with it. Well, no, we're not gonna try to keep up with the GD2 RSMR or something, but uh, it will be nice to see how it performs among the others. And I see we have uh, also still a bit of, not the latest tires, so we're gonna definitely take it easy. So let's go. I'm excited, a bit nervous yeah. even. <laughs> me too, me too. <laughs> for, the, for the apparent reason that I've never been uh, on the notch life yet, yeah. Wow, that's... Uh, First, a quick sync lap, but that's a very, uh, yeah, a big honor for me to yeah. take out your car that you just built and uh, take Thank you out on your first ever lap. So, first of all, before you guys gonna say like, Misha, you position the camera wrong, we cannot see the owner. Owner decided to stay anonymous and stay off the camera, which we all respect. So we're gonna call him for this video, Roger. I think you you <laughs> passed for that. Roger. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I'll take Roger. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> so we did two laps. We did the first lap to warm out the tires, warm up the car because it hasn't been on track, warm up ourselves, get acquainted uh, acquaintance with it, and also talk about the car and the philosophy behind it. And because we spent days, weeks, months exchanging messages on Instagram about. The cars in general, not only about this car, and I think there's lots of interesting things that Roger can tell us. So first of all, tell us about the history of this car. All right, yeah. Like, what, uh, what, uh, when did you buy it? Why did you buy it? Because nowadays, as we talked, it's a bit of a classic. Sure. <laughs> so, well, I bought it in uh, autumn of last year. Yeah. I first, or before that, I had uh, two air-cooled Porsches. Yeah. And um, then other cars, and then at some point I decided I want to have a GT product. And then I was in a really fortunate position to just test drive a lot of GT3s, RSs that I knew people had and gave me for a little run. And for some reason, I can't really pinpoint it, this car just really got to me. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's emotional for me. It feels a little air-cooled like, but it's modern. And I'm really, really, really happy so far. And then um, for me, obviously, because I heard so many people talk about Mantai as well, I just had to have the Mantai kit. It's as simple as that, because I wanted to know what like the original 996 from the early days feels like when Mantai puts their hands on it. And I'm really, yeah. really, really happy about it. Yeah, because like you said, it feels like air-cooled because it's the last, I mean, Oh, someone spilled some oil here. Let's stay off it. For many people, the very last 
911 is going to be either 997 because it's the last manual Metzger engine for other people 996 because of the weights for other people 993 yes. because it's air cooled but this I think ticks the box of having a bit of everything yeah absolutely absolutely so the context is like many years ago more than a decade ago already um, a friend of my family he took me to the Salzburg ring to what was then the Alpenpokal um, I don't know if it still exists I'm not quite sure but there he allowed me to take some laps with some some of his friends in air-cooled Porsches and this is how I got my first contact with Porsche not with the modern stuff but with the old stuff on the track and so everything ever since then this has kind of been the measure of my let's say Porsche excitement and so on and this car somehow delivers exactly that the, the balance between old and new and I'm not by nature a nostalgic guy who says the new stuff can't be good but this is a sweet spot for me so I had to have it it's absolutely amazing I mean we're rolling now quite easy through the bands just to warm everything up but the first impressions that I get from this car it's so lightweight yeah and Already in comparison to latest cars with all the OPF filters, silent exhaust and everything, yes. I'm looking at the, ta at the odometer or like at the, at the rev counter and I'm thinking we're doing like 9000 RPM but it's only 5 and 6, I'm yeah. not even like letting it rev to 8000. <laughs> That's such an emotional car really. Yeah, I'm happy you like it too. It's really good, it's really light, you can really feel it, the brakes do their job very well. Perfect. Warming out the front tires a bit, still scrubbing. practice my heel and toe again okay <laughs> yeah, I see, I see. especially with a short shifter and after not being in action for over a month but this is such an emotional car to drive already it's really really good it's really light you really need to balance it <laughs> right and what do you think about all the helpers not being there except ABS <laughs> I need to really watch out what I'm doing for that yeah <laughs> gonna let this car pass here no it's it's really good so it's your first ever lap of notch life uh, it what's, is yeah how's Indeed. your experience so far <laughs> i really like it i really like it i mean i've visited the 24 hours and the vln races many times and stood at different spots on the racetrack to watch it but being here for the first time driven by you of course that's really really cool i'm i'm, I'm really amazed by it yeah yeah absolutely i'm enjoying it a lot every every lap now it doesn't matter how many years we've been here it's really good yeah I really love that it's got so much elevation because even if you stand on the side and look look at it live when the race action is happening you don't get a feeling for how steep and yeah, Absolutely. complex the track is. Yeah. Yeah, tires are a bit hard. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Like, you know, we wanted this to be like the interview lap right. and now we're quiet for the second half of the lap. But we're also interviewing the car for, uh, you know, we're letting <laughs> yeah, it true. sing, true. letting it enjoy. Yeah, it's probably a sign of quality, right? When you stop talking because you just want Definitely. to listen. <laughs> Yeah, 
this I've been waiting for. You want to sell? <laughs> yeah. Okay, so from the inside it feels way less extreme than it sometimes looks from the outside yeah. videos. Challenge. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, it's so amazing to see what this car can do. It can do a lot more if we would have stickier tires. Yeah, sure, I guess, yeah. <laughs> and a driver who is not too cautious. <laughs> or I mean like more confident. You need to really get used to it. It's a really really emotional car. I guess this is what at the end we're looking for, right? If we're not driving competitively, probably maximization of emotion while driving. I guess that's what we're in for here. Yeah. At least for me, this is what I've always been looking for. Some takeoff. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we're keeping up with the 992 GT3, so... I'm sure he's not even trying to push it, but it still shows a lot. Yeah, I'm quite happy about that too. Uh-oh, GoPro gone. Last thing I want is to have it under my brake pedal. Absolutely, yeah, I can see. There you go. Thank you, got it. Thank you. Spectacular. It was, well, now that the tires are warm, we can dro drop the pressures and go again. Perfect, yeah, <laughs> let's go for it, let's do it. Let's do it. And we're gonna swap the GoPro for a POV because I think it's going to be also a very nice experience sure. for on the camera. We'll keep the GoPro off the dash, I think. And we'll take another sticky mount, it'll be fine. Okay. <laughs>
steering is what? Battery is off or something. Okay. Does it matter to us? Uh, well, there is no power steering, so. Well, that's going to be a good instruction video of what to do when your car is not good. To get behind the orange barrier as quick as possible to not to spill coolant and oil. At least the exhaust got nicely warm. Be tight, true often. Luckily, the back end didn't step out. And now we are going to demonstrate why there is a speed limit in bright shite at this section of the track. What many of you ask why we're slowing down here to this because sometimes a safety truck will need to make the exit or alternatively an entrance. As you can see, to make the entrance, because the the entrance is over there, it's almost 180 degree turn. And we have cars passing by. We need to swerve all the way to the left, then reverse it in, in there. That's still like the safest option, but sometimes trucks need to go really turning around. I really want to be sending it. So what happened? Did the crank fully snapped off? Yes. So you have no power steering, you have no... No cooling, no, no nothing. No charging, nothing. And that's what happened. A while later, end of the track day. Hello, focus on the time. The car is back. It's been uh, fixed by Manti Racing Mechanics and unfortunately, well, the crank pulley snapped. Luckily, it's not had nothing to do with uh, any work that Manti Racing does. It's uh, simply the fact that you're being reminded that it's still a 20 plus year old car and when you fix one thing, another thing might break and well, luckily disaster was avoided because it could have gone a lot worse because we when the crank Pulley snapped. We lost the power steering in Foxhole. I almost planted it there in the wall because the car we lost power steering and it was like pulling it to the outside. And like, Ugh. And then once we pulled out, it said issue with alternator because obviously the alternator wasn't charging because it was the same pulley. And then it was also not uh, pumping any coolant through the through the what's it called with the with the water pump. So that was like the whole issue issue. And luckily we saw it in time. We could park the car in time. So. I would say I hope you guys learned something from this video how to react in emergency situations on track get off the track as soon as possible notify marshals don't try to get off the track on your own power secure the car yourself and others and yeah yeah what should else should I say massive thank you to the owner for trusting me with his baby and allowing me to take uh, the car out and also him out for the first lap of his and the car and for Manti Racing for another amazing product. And I must say, after having driven many Porsches by now, the 991, Gen, the 993, and this, I think this hits the sweet spot. I'm gonna go browse Mobile at the later tonight to see how much these cost. Hopefully not too much because the emotion, ooh, and the drivability, really, really, really impressive. I need to drive 997 to see if that's maybe even Maybe even better, like to an extent, but yeah, we'll see. For that, stay tuned. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Looking forward to seeing you in the one of the upcoming ones with 
maybe another Porsche, another Monta Racing. Mm, tomorrow I might upload the fa like a very fast lap with large scan in the GT2 RSMR for more like modern actual cars. Well, stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching. Bye.